And uh, this assignment is called Exploring Digital Literacy. And again, it's been building on some of the other things. So the first thing we had you do was to install Digo. And I know that um, Digo is something new for most of you, uh, but it's a, a website or social service, media service, that lets you collect your book, bookmarks on the internet rather than on your, in your browser. And uh, there are a number of advantages of that. We're a huge proponent of using online software because everything's served, uh, saved online. Uh, we've already started hearing from some folks that, oh, my computer crashed or this happened to me. And uh, that's going to happen to everybody. I mean, it's just a certainty. And so the really interesting thing about working online is that if you work with a service that's very reliable and they're storing your stuff even in process, not even just the finished work, but as you are, are going along, then uh, you're constantly backed up. So uh, life's going to happen. The uh, lightning's going to strike your house or you're going to lose power or the snow will come. And uh, all of this stuff um, is natural and you should plan for it. And one of the best ways to plan for it is to make sure that you're always working in a fashion which um, the work that you're doing isn't so vulnerable. Now, you can't do that 100%, but working with online tools allows you to do that. And so we are encouraging people to use Google uh, Drive to, to write their documents on and so forth. And um, Digo is kind of part of that. It allows you to collect your bookmarks, and you can get at them from anywhere as long as you log in. And the other thing that's really great about it is it's a social service. It allows you to share your bookmarks with other people. So this assignment is taking advantage of that. We want you to install Digo. Here's my Digo library. So it's a collection of bookmarks. You, you, um, it's a free service to sign up for. And uh, you can annotate your bookmarks because... If you have a lot of bookmarks, you're going to want to be able to find them back. And so adding information allows you to do that. Uh, and then you also have the ability to share them or keep them private. Uh, and there are a couple of other features. Um, Digo is a company, so uh, they have some advanced features that they want to sell you. Uh, we don't use any of those advanced features, so don't feel any compulsion to pay for Digo. If you like Digo, Feel free to pay for it. It's not that expensive. I think it's $5 for uh, a year or forever or something. And, and I think it's even free for students. So um, it's not really a big deal, but we only ask you to use the features that are free to everyone. So there's no need to upgrade or go premium as you see um, Digo asking you every so often. So when you sign up for Digo, you're just given a space where your bookmarks are congregated. Now, how do you get bookmarks into to Digo? I think most of you have figured this out, but I want to go through it real briefly. Uh, after you get your account, what they want you to do is to install something into your browser. So you go to digo.tool slash tools, and it's sort of dependent on what you use. And in terms of browsers, our number one recommendation to everyone is Chrome. I have the Chrome browser here. I also use Safari because I'm on a Mac, but Safari is Mac only, and so Chrome is cross-platform, and it is pretty much the most standards compliant. It works with all the, the best, most advanced HTML5 programming and so forth. Uh, what we don't recommend are older versions of Internet Explorer. And, uh, you know, I think uh, Microsoft's heard the music. Their newest version of the uh, 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 micro, uh, Windows 10 isn't even going to have Internet Explorer. They're phasing it out, so they're going to replace that. But if you have Internet Explorer uh, 9 or maybe even 8, it's probably okay. But if you have something earlier, please don't use Internet Explorer. We prefer that you use Chrome. You can also use Firefox. And both Chrome and Firefox have extensions that you can install uh, into the browser uh, for Digo. And uh, with Chrome, they have something called the Chrome Store where you can get extensions, so you can get them there. But on the Digo site, there's a uh, on the Tools page, there's a, a set of links for uh, how you can install these things. So if you're using uh, Chrome, all you need to do is come to this page, click on the Chrome link, and it will install the extension. And the extension is permanently available up on the book um, on your uh, your toolbar. Now, if you have uh, a huge number of uh, Chrome extensions, 
it may not make the top of the list. There's a drop down here, so if you don't see it immediately, it's this D on a, on a blue badge. Um, then you need to go fishing for it, maybe give it a little bit higher priority. Uh, I don't know who, if you're a, a, a Chrome extension person or not, but if you've got a zillion extensions, you probably know how to manage them anyway. Um, one other thing I'll mention about Digo is that they do have mobile versions. You can get um, a version of the browser for the iPhone or the iPad. And the interesting thing about that is that it, it, it contains its own browser. So instead of being a plugin that you add to the system browser, you, you get the, um, the app and it is a browser in and of itself and, you can, and all of your surfing that you do that you bookmark automatically is built into that app. And everything still goes to your website uh, library so anything you do on a, an iPad or an iPhone comes to the, uh, the same web space that you can access from your, uh, your computer. So um, once you have installed this extension, then um, you invoke it whenever you want to create a bookmark. You don't do anything on the Digo site except look at your collected bookmarks. But to create bookmarks, you simply go out onto the internet. So, uh, you know, let me think of something fun here. Um, let me look up Miles Davis and see what I can find. Uh, Last.fm. All right. Um, so let's say I wanted to bookmark this page. Uh, all I need to do while I'm on this page is invoke the bookmark or invoke the extension, and I get a series of options here. And so hitting save will bring up the requester and start the bookmark. Now there are a couple of things I can do. Uh, I can highlight material. So if, if, I, if, if this is part of uh, the web page that I want to remember, you want to make highlights because they're going to show up on the, uh, the, the, the library homepage and they will remind you why you're interested in this page. So uh, in order to, to highlight something, I invoke my browser, invoke annotate, and I have a, a number of colors that I can you know, annotate with that are kind of cool. I choose green here and I made a highlight. Uh, now I come back to the extension and I choose edit and my bookmark requester has come up. So uh, if I just hit save, it's gonna go straight to my library. There are a couple of things I can do beforehand. Uh, one, of the, one of them is I wanna make sure that it's public there's a button here for private. If this gets set to where it's automatically clicked on, I'm not going to be able to see your bookmarks when you show me your page. And I'm going to go look at your bookmarks and grade your, your assignment. So I need to be able to see it. So you want your bookmarks to be public. We also want you to add tags to your bookmarks. So tags are uh, just words that you can go, keywords that you can search on to go find things back. And we have two required uh, tags that we want you to add to uh, every bookmark you make for this assignment. One is the name of the term that you're uh, searching for. Now, I didn't particularly search for an assignment term right now, so I'll do that in a second. But you just want to put things in here that will remind you why you chose this page. So I, I looked up Miles Davis. I'm going to put Miles Davis's name in there. And, uh, you know, it's about listening and, uh, you know, maybe music. So I put some keywords in here, and I hit save. And now if I go back to my library and uh, refresh, the, the top link is going to be the bookmark that I just made. And here's the highlight that I um, uh, made. And here are the tags that I made. So that's really how difficult it is to, to make bookmarks in Digo. Uh, once you get the process down, it just becomes a natural part of what you're doing. So uh, this is really going to uh, feed into your natural pattern of surfing. And that's what this assignment is really about. Let me go back to the assignment a minute, uh, for a minute again. It's called Exploring Digital Literacy. And the instructions, uh, you know, take you through the process. And there are a couple of steps, and that's what maybe seems a little bit confusing. And there are 20 terms. So it's sort of a vocabulary assignment, but I don't want you to think of this as busy work. The important part of this assignment is your research, not 
how fast you get this done or whether you can just get it over with because you don't want to do this. Uh, the way that you make this a fun assignment, and I'm pleading with everyone to make it fun for yourself because we don't mean this as a punishment or to be boring. Um, we want you to do the surfing that you ordinarily do. Uh, so a lot of people that they just want to try to get through this assignment in 20 minutes. So they look up all of these terms and they go straight to the MiriamWebster.com uh, uh, website and they go straight to Wikipedia and they tell me what a dictionary says about these terms. They tell me what an encyclopedia says about these terms. Now I don't want to put down dictionaries and encyclopedias. They have absolutely um, uh, critical functions to perform, but they are not uh, part of that process for this assignment. You're supposed to figure out what these terms mean to you in context. And in context can only mean that you're going to see, encounter these terms in what you normally do and see and read. So, and I don't think any of you normally read the dictionary or normally read the encyclopedia. So I don't want you to think about these terms by themselves. I want you to think about how they fit into who you are. So that's going to change a little bit for each of you depending on what you're interested in. So if I come back to Google here and try to do one of these standard searches, let me pick one of these terms here. Um, encryption. Just at random I'm going to pick encryption. So uh, I could come back here and I could type in encryption by itself and I'm going to get 75 million hits, plenty of things to choose from. And what's right at the top? Wikipedia and probably the Webster's Dictionary as well. Uh, and, and maybe even, um, you know, Google's getting into the act of giving you dictionary definitions too. But all this is going to tell you is what encryption is by itself, not in what encryption means to you. So what I recommend to everybody is instead of just simply searching on the term, we want you to combine this with what you are interested in. Uh, all of you know what you like. You're here because you make music. You're here because you love video games. So why don't you start out looking to see what this term has to do with what you love. I guarantee you're going to have a better time and be more interested and more engaged in reading these pages than you will in reading the dictionary. Um, so if you're a person who likes video games, you want to find out what encryption has to do with video games. And if you're a person who likes music, you want to find out what encryption has to do with music. And each of these things is going to be subtly, slightly different because um, we want to know how it impacts what you do and how you uh, operate on the Internet. And I can't give you a single answer for how that works. You are all different people with different interests. And you don't even actually have to make this about what you're studying right now. I mean, if you have a particular interest in politics, you could put politics in here and you'll get a different kind of answer, but it's going to be something that feeds into what your interests are because the second search term I'm asking you to put in, I can't give it to you. You have to supply it. You have to figure out what you're interested in. If you are interested in music, I guarantee you, there's going to be some pretty cool articles in here about um, CD encryption or um, uh, online uh, uh, music mu music delivery and, and, and all of these kinds of things. So I think this is where you're going to have a good time. And we have set this assignment up. If I go back to these instructions, we say we think this is going to take you 11 hours. Well, if you race to get this done, there's no way it takes 11 hours. You, I'm sure somebody really fast could probably get this done in an hour. And they're not going to remember doing it, and they're not going to have any fun, and they're only, gonna, you know, they're only going to remember that they read the dictionary. But if you deep dive into the Internet, and you just look at stuff that you're really interested and curious about anyway, and you align it with these terms, then you're going to spend a lot of time surfing the web. You're going to go down the rabbit hole. And that's what we're asking you to do. That's why we're saying this takes a bit of time. And you won't, don't want to do it all at once. You want to break it up into a couple of sessions because, you know, nobody should just spend that much time, you know, 
clicking link after link after link. You want to, you know, give yourself a little bit of a break and whatnot. So at least two or three um, uh, hours and then take a break. Get away from it. But if you dive deep into these terms, you're going to find things that matter to your life and you're going to get a sense of what these words mean and how they relate to you that's different from what you're going to get from just looking up the term by itself. I know I'm harping on this, but you know, this is the only way to make this assignment relevant to you. If you race through it without considering that this assignment has anything to do with your life, then it will just be an assignment and it will just be something that goes in one ear and out the other. But all of these terms are something that, that will come to matter in your professional life, that you need to have some, some notion of how they affect and interact with the things that you do, not the things that other people might do if you're looking through the window. So uh, that's why we want you to create these personal definitions. So it's going to take a while. And in the instructions, it says that you need to get uh, at least two bookmarks for each term. So there's 20 terms here. That's 40 uh, bookmarks that we want you to create. And that's racing through. And another thing I'm going to give you that's a big tip, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but let me show you the rubric. Uh, this is not something I highly recommend reading, but uh, what is useful is it's, it tells you how we grade these assignments. We have lots of sections, lots of different teachers. This is the way all the teachers agree that um, how each assignment should be graded. And so we give parts of the assignment different weights. So it's good to come in here and see how much is worth, each, you know, how many points. And we give 35 points over to how many bookmarks you created. But we also break it up into, you know, the, the best grade, the highest grade, an okay grade and a, and a poor grade. Uh, so th there are different levels that you could get for each one. And if you just do the minimum of what we say, if we say get two bookmarks per term, that falls into the proficient category here, which means you'd get a B. And I know you all want an A. So every time we say get some, do at least two or do at least three, you want to do more than that to get the best grade at full sale because full sale makes you earn the A, makes you earn the 100%. It means you have to go over and beyond what we're asking for. And so um, when we say two or more, in your head just say three or more because you know you want a better grade. So that means that for each one of these terms here, you want to find at least three different bookmarks. And getting back to how we want you to use uh, Digo, uh, for each bookmark you create, we want you to uh, create at least one highlight. Uh, there's no point in having more than three highlights, and one or two highlights per page is, is, is pretty much all you need. So you can come in and you can create the highlight, and then uh, before you hit save on the requester, we want you to add tags here. Now, each uh, bookmark has to have a tag of the term that you're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for encryption. And uh, Digo does a pretty good job of scanning through the page and making suggestions for tags. So you will get a, a series of, of buttons here that you can click on that will, that will give you tags. Uh, and then you can write in any other things that you want. Uh, you know, they have music here and audio. Uh, but remember also, we wanted you to put the name of the assignment in here, and we recommended that you write DGL vocab. Now, uh, here's a little tip. Uh, this tag system only works on single words. You'll, you'll remember when uh, I previously did the, that it, I wanted to do Miles Davis, and it gave me two words, Miles and Davis, which is not going to be very good for me later on when I come back to look for it because... You know, uh, I can only look for Miles or Davis. I can't look for Miles Davis. So if you want to have a multi-word tag, the trick to doing that is putting it in quote marks. So if I type quote mark uh, DGL vocab or vocabulary, either one is sufficient, and close it with um, another quote mark, now it will save this double word as a single tag. And when I do that uh, and come back 
to my library and refresh, we'll see that that tag has been saved. And uh, the really good thing about doing this is you only have to do it once because uh, Digo will remember the tags that you've created and offer them up as suggestions as well. So once you create a multi-word tag like DGL vocab or vocabulary, it'll be there available for you the next time you do it and you can, you can click on it. But you also see in the main library that it starts to build up and show you which tags you have. So if I wanted to see all the, the bookmarks I created that have the term DGL vocab in them, I just click on this and it would give me a special page with all of that. This is the subsection of my library. So it's a way that I can search this. And it's going to be a way that you can have a running tally of how many bookmarks for each term you're, you're getting uh, if you go in a kind of a random fashion. But um, what I suggest is that you just keep going back to Google and uh, playing with search terms. Uh, you know, maybe you're not interested in music. Maybe you're interested in creative writing. Uh, I guarantee whatever additional search terms you're going to find, you're going to find some Google hits that will align with that and give you some things that uh, you will want to read. So uh, how to create a personal encryption scheme to easily hide your data in plain sight. So, you know, this is for writers who want to put their their uh, their diaries on the web or something like that. So, um, again, lots of interesting things to read, which is going to take a little bit of time. But we want you to take a little bit of time. The slower you go, the more this is all going to sink in. But uh, really, after two or three hours, you will have created your collection of bookmarks, most likely. Uh, and so you, when you have uh, 40 or 60 or 80 or 100 bookmarks and you, you feel like you know what these terms are, the next phase of this assignment is that we want you to create your personal definitions for each term. So you're going to do that on a separate document. You're going to create a text file. And uh, you can use anything you're familiar with to use a text file. If you have desktop tools on your on your computer, you can use that. But again, we recommend that everyone use these online tools. So if you go to your Google Drive account, most of you have probably already started to, uh, you know, sign up with Google and, and, and start to play around with these tools. If you come in and you hit new Google Doc, then you'll have a text file. And uh, you maybe just want to name it with the name of the assignment. Uh, exploring digital literacy or DGL vocab. There's not any particular thing that you have to name this. Um, I have to stop talking or I won't type correctly. I'm uh, not multimodal that way. Um, so, and, and again, you want to uh, put a headline in there. And then you can just start creating your... Um, Personal definitions. And these personal definitions um, are how you would explain this term to someone else. If your buddy or your younger brother or sister came to you and said, what is encryption? How would you explain it to them? You would tell them verbatim what the dictionary said. You would put it in your own words. And that's what we want to hear from you. Uh, and we want to have it be a sufficient definition that you feel good about it. Um, it doesn't need to match or align up with what fits some professional standard. Now, um, one of the things we have given here for you, we have a number of documents that you could download. Uh, you know, there's an instruction set, a rubric, and there's also an FAQ. And if you look at the FAQ, on the second page, we give you a couple of examples of poor, proficient, and exceptional definitions. Now, this exceptional definition ends up sounding a lot like a regular dictionary to me. But, you know, if you can, if this is put into your own personal language, that's what we're looking for. So I'm, I'm really pretty happy with uh, this level here, as long as it makes sense. Uh, a lot of what happens in these poor definitions is that you end up using the term to define itself. Encryption is something that's encrypted. No, that's a poor definition because you haven't explained anything to me. So um, uh, if I were to come back here, uh, my personal definition of encryption is uh, using uh, coding algorithms 
to um, compress or conceal digital data. Is that the exact definition? I don't know. This is what I made up at, at this moment. Anyway, uh, you're going to go on. You're going to put 20 terms in here. And you're, uh, you're also going to put your name. It's what you always want to do on a document when you turn in your homework. And the second most important thing you're going to do is give me the link to your library. A lot of a lot of students think, oh, I have to print out my web page to turn it in as homework, turn it into a PDF or do something. No, I'm going to go to your web page and look at it. That's why we want it to be public. So all you really have to do is give me the URL. And um, all, uh, all the different accounts at Digo have the same format here. It's HTTPS, meaning it's encrypted, dot slash slash www dot digo dot com slash user slash username so mine is Daryl W Moore that's my username so if I just grab this uh, link out of this web page I can come back here paste it in and now I will have turned in the link so that the teacher can go see it so every uh, everyone you turn in the link to your digo web page along with your definitions and that's what you're turning in so if I had finished all my definitions here, I'm, I'm jumping ahead, just like in a uh, baking show, they, they skip the part while the cake is baking. You know, they put it in the oven and then they go to a commercial and they come back and it's all done. Well, let's presume I've got all 20 definitions here. How am I going to turn this in? Well, there are a couple of ways. Uh, with a digital document, you can share it. You can click on uh, sharing and change the permissions. But the easiest way is you can just leave it here and go to File, Download As, and this will give you a digital file from the server. So you can you can create a, a Word doc or an RTF file or a PDF or a TXT. I'm just going to go with an RTF, uh, rich text format. Some of you may choose to go with Word doc. Any of these formats are acceptable to turn in as your homework. So uh, if I hit rich text format, it automatically downloaded this. And um, I don't know if it went to my desktop or my, uh, I'm going to guess that it went to my download space. Let me see if I can find this. Here we are. I'm going to drag it to my desktop. So here's the RTF file that um, Google exported to my downloads folder. And, you know, very recognizable. Now, we also recommend that you zip your homework before turning it in. This is a text file. It's very small. It really doesn't matter. But it's a good habit to get into to always compress your homework before turning it in. Later on, if you turn in a file, folder file full of uh, programmer code or HTML or a, a large WAV file or a huge uh, PowerPoint document or a movie or something like that, you'll want to have that compressed anyway. So um, on a Mac, it's as simple as uh, right-clicking and going compress, and it makes it uh, zip compression is built into the to the OS system. On PCs, it's slightly different. You may or may not have zip compression on your machine. If you don't have zip compression on your machine, uh, again, there are uh, plenty of um, online website services that will do it for you for free. So what I would recommend is you go to Google. Type in zip compression online. And the very first link is a service that will allow you to upload to their server a text file. You will download back a zip file. So if you don't have zip compression on your own computer, you can do it through the internet. It's a, a very simple process and it's pretty easy to access. But if I come back here to the assignment page, at the bottom of the assignment page, uh, Right next to where you downloaded the, uh, the instructions, there's a drag and drop uh, panel. So you just simply grab your homework, put it on the drag and drop panel, and you will see it upload to the server. You'll actually get some feedback. I think before you can upload it, there'll be like a little requester where you have to click and say, yes, this is my original work. Because Full Sail is very, uh, very cognizant about 
you know, making sure that people are, uh, are uh, paying attention to copyrights and so forth. So when you turn in your homework, you'll, there'll be this little button that you click in that says, yes, this is an original file from me and so forth. Um, and uh, you'll probably have seen all of that in the uh, manual for the, uh, the student handbook and all that kind of thing. And that's the process. Now I compressed a lot of it. It's going to take a lot longer to do 20 terms and surf through them all and find three or four links for each one. Uh, and how you do this is up to you. Um, and uh, the Digo should be right there with you. And once you get the hang of it, making these tags and, and uh, adding uh, highlights and things is pretty simple. Now, one thing you're going to find, uh, we're looking at a, a PDF. These are the instructions that you know you downloaded. Um, Digo has the ability to um, bookmark these, but it doesn't work with PDFs quite as easily as it does with web pages. Um, Digo is mainly a lot of JavaScript happening in the background, and so it interacts with HTML much easier than it interacts with PDFs. So if you find PDFs on the Internet, uh, you can use them as part of your uh, collection of resources, and they're usually pretty good, but uh, don't expect Digo to uh, play as nicely with them. And uh, anybody who's interested, I'm going to drop the uh, link for this uh, zip service in the chat box, so you could bookmark it if you like. Uh, but again, uh, it's pretty simple. I just found it by typing zip compression online into Google, so uh, there's no mystery to how we got here. And uh, again, I used Google Drive to write my definitions, but you can use Office on your on your machine. Uh, you can use Notepad on your machine. Uh, you can use OneDrive on the internet if that's what you want. Anything you can use to write a text file is fine. Uh, so that's the process, and I'm feeling like I left some steps out, so I'm hoping that you guys will, will uh, hit me with some questions. But if you don't have any questions, then I think maybe it makes sense. But if anybody feels like they don't understand it, please speak up now because I'm happy to go through this uh, uh, several times to make sure it does make sense for you. So um, do we have any comments or questions? I'm going to open up the mics. So if there's some noise, we'll have to deal with it. But anybody have any questions? Anybody want me to show them something again? I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, it's kind of uh, off topic, but I, I got off the phone with someone. They were telling me about how we have a spring break coming up. Oh, yes. I was uh, actually wanting to go through that because um, of, of next week's assignments. So um, I know it doesn't make sense for a lot of you guys. Uh, you just started class. But believe me, if people have been going here for a year, they're really ready for spring break to happen. So uh, in the online world, uh, spring break just means that nothing is going on with the assignments. So what will happen is the week one assignments will end Sunday night. They're all due. Anybody who doesn't get their homework done on Sunday night, make sure you send me a message or something. I can extend that deadline or reopen the assignment for you. But uh, essentially, you're supposed to be done with everything from the first week by the end of Sunday. And then immediately thereafter, at 12.01 a.m. on Monday morning, assignments for week two will open up. But they won't be due at the end of that week. They'll be due in two weeks. So you essentially have two weeks to get all of the week two work done. And the, uh, the thing that I needed to mention to everybody is uh, – one of the big assignments for uh, week two is a group assignment. I'm going to put you into three different teams that are going to have a debate. And so there will be a topic that you have to uh, do research on and create a team document with. And um, the assignment, again, isn't going to be due for a week and a half, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you who your teams are, and you guys can go ahead and get started on this. But you won't really have anything due until... Uh, Thursday the 16th, I believe it is. Let me look at my calendar real quick. Um, so the assignment will open up on the 6th. It will be due on the 20th. 
and teams A and B will have assignments due on the 16th. So while next week you'll have a chance to work on it, you won't have anything to do, and uh, I'm going to be hosting labs on that very early in week two so that you guys can uh, you know, know what we're looking for. It really involves research and using the school library. So um, for most of you, it just that you're going to have a lot of extra time for your week two assignments, and uh, that's not really a bad thing, but uh, I know that it's kind of a bad timing for you guys who just began and you're all full of energy to be taking a break, but uh, the rest of the school is really going to be ready for their break, so that's just the, the, uh, the format. For online guys, it just means that uh, there's two weeks available for the week two assignments. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Are the labs during the week? Well, there won't be any labs next week, but there'll be labs uh, a week after that, and that okay. will end the week that everything's due. All right, that makes sense. So if I pull this calendar down, I don't know if everybody can see this calendar, but uh, we are on the 2nd of April right now. Week one assignments are going to close on Sunday. Week two assignments will open on Monday, the 6th. And this is the break period, but you can work if you like. And then here is the official week two. So I'm going to have a, uh, a lab about the debate on the 13th that you guys can attend. But there won't be anything happening in this middle week here that's considered spring break. And you won't have anything to do until... Uh, the 13th or until the, the 19th or the 20th. So that's the way spring break works for online folks. Uh, campus students, yeah, we actually kick you out of the building. You're, you guys aren't even in the building, so it doesn't really make uh, much sense, but you won't have anything due next week. All right, any other questions? Yes, will this be available later on tonight? Yes, I'm recording this, and uh, I tend to have about an hour, hour and a half turnaround on getting it compressed. So um, I, if you – I don't know if you saw the first lab. I posted it into the discussion. Uh, I've already posted the global, and what I tend to do – uh, each teacher puts their recordings different places, so, you know, it's just – uh, I have to explain this, but uh, 1.1, where you signed up for um, uh, the global Globals and Labs, that's where I have already placed the video for the Global. So now that you can no longer attend Globals, I put the video for the for the uh, the week in here that you can view it. And this is the the button that you created uh, clicked on to come to this lab. And this is where the recording for this is this uh, lab will be, and that'll be the same process. As soon as uh, a, a lab is over, then I'll put the video where the uh, the little placard was, and you will always be able to find it there. So you should be able to, f to see it, you know, eight o'clock tonight or so. And uh, anybody who has uh, any questions about this assignment. Feel free to uh, send me email and write me questions. I'll be answering uh, and checking messages um, all through the weekend. So uh, uh, I understand that you know weekends are getting close to the deadline. That's when people start to get a little freaked out at the beginning. And and I'm go I'll be around. I won't necessarily be at my desk 100% of the time. But you sh if you send me a message, you should hear within hear back from me within an hour or so. Uh, and I'm going to send out the uh, the team assignments tomorrow, so you will get that all in a message uh, or an announcement tomorrow. And uh, anybody that wants uh, to can start contacting each other. And the actual assignment again will open on Monday morning, so you'll know what the topic is. But you can go ahead and start forming the team and getting together with folks. Uh, figuring out how to collaborate is actually part of that assignment. So we give you. A number of options, but it's really up to you whether you guys want to talk in email or get together on Skype or use instant messaging or 
or uh, any other ways that you want to uh, collaborate. So um, that's part of the assignment is just figuring out how to get a hold of folks. But we give you tools and avenues to get a hold of each other. So, uh, most people tend to enjoy the, the group assignment. It's a, a really good way of getting to know other people and uh, uh, working directly with other students. So uh, this assignment, again, is going to be due at the end of the day on Sunday, which is midnight for Eastern Time and 9 p.m. for uh, West, West Coast folks. Uh, and uh, if you're getting close to the deadline and you think you're not going to get it in in time, make sure you send me an email so that I can make sure that the assignment doesn't close for you. I have the ability to reopen the assignments, but they're all going to automatically close at midnight. So... Uh, make sure you keep me in the loop if you're having any difficulties. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, guys. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to you soon.